Because Xena Warrior Princess was unable to officially declare that Xena and Gabrielle were a couple while also making it one of the gayest shows ever, there is no canon moment to tell us when they got together and I'm about to get really nerdy and give you my theory about when I think they became a couple and why I think it was then. I've heard that many people believe that Xena and Gabrielle first got together at the end of the quest partway through season two and this seems like a perfectly logical place for their relationship to have started. And while I agree it was definitely a moment that transitioned them from friends into more, I think it took them a bit more time before they actually became a couple. Okay, so first things first, when did they even realize that they had feelings for each other? For Xena, I feel like it was pretty early on. Having already had romantic feelings for Lao Ma and Akimi, among others, she understood that being attracted to women was a thing. So I figured that within the first season, she knew she had feelings. If I had to pick a moment, I'd say it was at the end of Death and Chains when Gabrielle, crying because the guy she was crushing on was taken by death, she turns to Xena for comfort. Xena's reaction shows that this innocent action had an effect on her. She becomes self-conscious and for a brief moment flustered, which is not a personality trait that we usually associate with the warrior princess. So for me, I think it was when she realized that her affections went beyond friendship. Now, I know that in a commentary, Lucy Lawless said that she was just trying to figure out how to play that moment, but I don't know, it just comes across as Xena having some kind of revelation, at least in my eyes. Although, to be honest, there was something there from the moment Xena even set eyes on Gabrielle. It's the threat of Gabrielle being whipped that motivated Xena to step in and save the village of Potadia, and throughout the battle she keeps looking to Gabrielle, which results in her getting knocked down. Something we get to know is not usual for her, because she's generally very focused. It's been two seconds and Xena is, perhaps without even realizing it, a total goner for Gabrielle but I think she realizes that she actually has these feelings in Death and Chains. And I think it was totally confirmed in Is There a Doctor in a House when she had a complete meltdown at Gabrielle's death, which made her realize she was irrevocably in love. But given her warlording past, I suspect she didn't feel she would be good for Gabrielle, which to some degree she was right, and it's a theme that crops up throughout the series. It hasn't always been good for being with me. It seemed to hurt her. She said a few times that she didn't want Gabrielle to lose her innocence, but being with her inevitably did just that. Although we do get to see a best case scenario, if you will, of what it would have been like if they had never met in When Fates Collide. And while it's not like Gabrielle's life was better, in fact, she missed out on the love of her life, sorry, her soulmate for all of eternity. And I don't know, that seems a pretty steep trade-off. But of course, Xena doesn't know this at this point, and it wasn't even clear that Gabrielle was into women, because while Gabrielle definitely harbored a bit of hero worship, she had not overtly indicated that she found women attractive. I mean, sure, she said, It's not like your breasts aren't dangerous enough. Have you seen Xena? She's tall. She's beautiful. Piercing blue eyes. And she certainly does give us some baby gay vibes, as I mentioned in my Xena and Gabrielle's Gays Moment Part 2 video, but she's also very clearly shown to like men. With these considerations, I feel Xena felt it was easier to leave it unaddressed and to content herself with... For me, our friendship binds us closer than blood ever could. And also, the show was giving her plenty of mouse suitors at the start of the series as a distraction. That is, until she dies in destiny, and according to the show's mythology, she gets to be privy to Gabrielle's thoughts, and well. I think that this is what gave Xena the courage to lean in for that kiss in the quest. For Gabrielle, the moment she realized was easily the kiss. The way she pulled back and blinked up at Autolycus meant that this was a total surprise to her, and it was a moment. With Xena's permanent death pending and the need to get the ambrosia, however, I feel like it didn't leave a lot of space to review those feelings. After the quest, we're immediately catapulted into a necessary evil which requires the two to enlist the help of Callisto, who was responsible for Perdiccas's death early in the season. While they got a moment where they get to chat about how it felt for Xena to be in Gabrielle's body, <laughs> that sounds dirty but it isn't, 
Perdiccas's death was still something fresh for Gabrielle, and I suspect that she wasn't ready to examine what her feelings were for Xena, and this moment in blind faith seems to corroborate that. I can't marry the king because my heart belongs to another. And even though I can't be with him now, I'm not ready to be with anyone else. While it could be read as Gabrielle referring to Xena since you know, they can't be together because Gabby has been kidnapped, the more plausible reading is that she's referring to Perdiccas. And I don't think anything more has happened since the quest kiss, and I think that would explain why in A Day in a Life there was a certain tension between the two. Now, while it's largely banter and the mundane squabbles of two people living every moment together, it hardly feels like two people newly in a relationship. I read it more as... I don't know, the unspoken sexual tension simmering. It's all of the things they haven't yet addressed manifesting. Xena seems to be working out her frustrations by using kitchen items as weapons to get her juices flowing because Gabrielle sure isn't helping her out with that just yet. It isn't until Ulysses that I feel Gabrielle is seriously revisiting her feelings when Xena is clearly attracted to Ulysses. She's given a couple of moments where it's clear that the two having feelings for each other bothers her deeply. What a woman. But while they clearly gave her these beats within the episode, they don't properly resolve it. It's not discussed or alluded to beyond just those moments. And while polyamory is by no means off the table for these two, I feel like Xena being so quick to search for a third feels, I don't know, a bit yikes. And makes this moment feel like a punch in the stomach. I don't think I would ever have let myself feel the way I feel now about Ulysses if it wasn't for you teaching me how to love. So I prefer the interpretation that they've discussed nothing since the quest, Xena is reading it as a rejection of her advances, and Gabby is still processing. An episode later, they're caught up in a war between the Athenian army and the Horde. Finding themselves in a hopeless situation, Xena reverts to her darker warlord ways in order to rally the men and to give them a fighting chance. It's Gabrielle who calls her out on it and serves as a kind of compass to bring her back to herself, for which Xena says, You understand hatred, but you have never given in to it. You don't know how much I love Anna. What it sounds like is her starting to say that she loves Gabrielle, but then changes her mind and why would they change it if they were already together? In turn, Gabrielle sees this other side of Xena and who she used to be and how that darkness remains inside of her. And though she challenges it, she ultimately, at least I feel, accepts that part of Xena and that it exists. But I can only imagine it gave her pause, seeing this dimension, this new dimension of her best friend, a side that she's only heard about and never experienced, especially since, to my mind, she's turning over the idea of what it might actually be like for them to be together. I feel like this episode initiates a shift between the two. I couldn't even say what, but there is something perhaps about how Gabrielle looks at Xena in this moment here, which just feels like she's figuring it out and that she's ready to address her feelings. In the next episode, The Lost Marina, Xena willingly jumps onto the cursed ship of sea crops because Gabrielle is there, even though it would mean that they would have to stay on the boat until they die. And the way that Xena and Gabrielle embrace here feels, I don't know, like a new level of intimacy between the two. But given a moment in the finale that I'll discuss in a moment, I don't think that they're there yet. I think that they've started to explore it and Xena being just way too far gone already willingly joins Gabrielle in her fate because she's just that extra. I feel like we close out the season with them still not together because otherwise I'm not sure why Gabrielle will be saying this. Just between you and me, being chased can be real hard. Is she saying it to, I don't know, not so subtly tell Xena something? Let's go with that. And I feel that if these episodes are viewed with that lens that they're not yet together, a pretty cohesive subtext narrative emerges. At least that's what I see. I don't know. Maybe you have a different opinion, so... Let me know what that is in the comments. So we end season two on a comedy of errors episode that focuses on Cupid's love. Gabrielle has told Xena that she's finding celibacy hard. And is that flirting from Xena with her response? Chase. Mm. Now I was talking about having to answer to that stupid bell your whole life. When Xena is hit by Cupid's arrow, the first person she sees is Draco. Gabrielle's little... <laughs> seems incredulous, but do I detect jealousy perhaps as well? 
This continues as she watches Xena boxing out her sexual frustrations and it's only when she is hit with Cupid's arrow herself that her concerns disappear. Noteworthy is that when she gets hit by Cupid's arrow there is a deliberate slow-mo sequence where she should see Xena first as she's calling out and looking for her but the joke is that she sees Joxa first. Once all is set right again while the camera is slowly zooming in on Joxa and his disappointment that Gabrielle's emotions for him were only Cupid's doing is that Xena and Gabrielle flirting once more? Xena, do I hear a touch of romance in your voice? Not if I hear a touch of the I told you so in yours. Given Gabrielle's tendency to turn her adventure with Xena into stories, I don't doubt that she spent quite some time reflecting on everything that happened, and I would assume she might have wondered what would it have been like if she'd seen Xena and not Joxa first. And I feel like she would have followed Zena's advice to her from back in season one. I hope I find someone who'll make me smile like that. I'm sure you will. Just don't be afraid to speak up when it happens. Of course, that's never been a problem with you, has it? And just gone for it. How do subsequent episodes hold up to this interpretation? Well... We open up in season three, an unknown amount of time has passed when Xena goes mad due to the Furies. In this episode, a few moments such as when Gabrielle goes to Xena, who is standing naked before villagers screaming that they're murderers, and the moment when she says goodbye to Xena before she goes on her side quest, has a tenderness to it. And yes, I could totally believe that they've been intimate here, that Gabrielle is playing the part of the concerned girlfriend. Ares' comment at the end of the episode, I still don't get what you see in her sounds like a comment that is being made about them being a couple. Beyond that, in Been There Done That, the second episode of season three, we get this. Is that a hickey? It's subtle, but Gabrielle's definitely had a moment there, and honestly, there isn't much room for interpretation. Yes, I know this was an ad lib from Lucy Lawless, but it made it pretty unequivocal. Then at the start of the episode, while cremating Joxa, Xena puts her arms around Gabrielle, which mirrors the embrace of the lovers who are looking on. And then they lie down to sleep in each other's arms, which happens very naturally as if this is something that they do now, but this is in fact the first time that we see them do that. That episode also made a number of light and funny allusions to Xena and Gabby having a role in the hay, if you will, and the coconuts at the end too. Also a Lucy Lawless ad lib just adds that sensation that something has definitely transpired between them. Then they're off to Britannia, then Chin, a couple of episodes later, and with it we see a seismic shift in their relationship. The motivations for Gabrielle betraying Xena to stop her from killing the Green Dragon could be explained from the point of view of friendship or motivated by yet unexamined feelings, but with a declaration like, I wanted to betray her. I gave her everything and it meant nothing to her. I hated her for loving someone else. Why? My hatred and jealousy almost destroyed my best friend. It feels like the less likely option in my mind when stacked against all the little markers that I've just discussed that suggest that they're now more than just friends. The depth of the rift after Gabrielle killed her daughter Hope for the murder of Xena's son Solon could work with them as friends as well, but this just feels like it's the actions of lovers. Besides which, this is also when we begin to see them sleeping in the same bedroll, because they've done it before in a day in a life, but it feels like they're, you know, actually sharing a bed now with a blanket and everything, and then this moment certainly suggests that they like to snuggle. That isn't to say that everything that happens after necessarily fits easily into this narrative as there are still some male love interests, namely in season three with the episode King Con. That had Xena reciprocating some kind of feelings for this guy and Gabby pushing them together as she did with Ulysses, which is confusing. A few lines even as early as warrior princess Tramp contradicts the idea of them being together. And how can I pass your wisdom on to these women of questionable virtue who so obviously disregard the purity of their own bodies? I was married at the time. And even in later seasons, like when Xena almost kisses Ares and Chakram, although she wasn't really herself at the time. And although Gabrielle looked pretty darn betrayed when Xena announces her pregnancy, she ultimately ends up musing. When was the last time we saw Hercules? But compared to the overwhelming number of moments that point to them being together, and with the writers probably not getting that detailed with the subtextual narrative, or perhaps being forced by the network to include some kind of beard, I chose to ignore it. 
What can be noted though is that from King Kong onwards there are pretty much no further male love interests of the week to be seen. Sure there is the inclusion of the ongoing tension between Xena and Ares and in the final season a few times where Xena had to seduce men like Lucifer and Antony. Later in the show there is also unresolved tension between Gabby and Virgil but the strength of the bond between Xena and Gabrielle was so palpable that they paled in comparison to the point of insignificance in my eyes. So, from season 3 onwards, Xena and Gabrielle seem to solidify as a tangible couple. And there you have it. I've clearly thought about this way too much. <laughs> let me know if you agree with my dissection of this very important moment. And if you don't agree, let me know what your head canon is. Be sure to check out my channel for more videos on Xena and other sapphic film and TV content. Until next time, lady lovers.